Welcome to another Ryan Sports Views. Tonight, I'm predicting the 2021 Scotiabank CONCACAF League, making my predictions for this tournament that starts tomorrow night. We will start with each preliminary round tie, and then we will go on to the final, and I will predict my winner and the six teams who qualify for the CCL next year. First off, Hunts Deportivo FC of El Salvador versus Comunicaciones FC of Guatemala. I think that's Comunicaciones. Comunicaciones is a good team. They have talent. They have depth. They have strength. I think they are better than Hunts Deportivo. And easily for me, I think Comunicaciones will show their quality over them and go on to the round of 16 to face Alianza FC of El Salvador. And there you go for that one. Comunicaciones over Hunts Deportivo. I think Comunicaciones has way more quality. Next up, Metropolitan FA of Puerto Rico versus Santa Lucia of Guatemala. I think Santa Lucia wins this tie. Again, Puerto Rico, Metropolitan, FA, they came through the Caribbean Club Championship, if I'm not mistaken. Santa Lucia probably has more talent, a better team, a lot more history of success over Metropolitan. So I would say that Santa Lucia has more to draw off of to win this tie over Metropolitan. So Santa Lucia would win this tie. I don't know if it'll be easy. I think it'll be tight. But I think they will still prevail. And then go on to face Deportivo Saprissa in the first round. The proper first round, round of 16. Next preliminary round tie. C.D. Foz of El Salvador versus Forge FC of Canada. For me, I like Forge. Forge has built for this tournament. They have learned from 2019 and 2020. They have learned what not to do and what to do, how to build their team for this competition. I think they're more focused on this competition. I think that they want to get at least fourth place in the Canadian Premier League so they can make the playoffs and then kick on then, but focus more on CONCACAF League as well. I don't know if they're going to focus as well on the Voyagers Cup once that starts, even though it's three one-legged games. I don't know if they'll focus on that as much. So, when it comes down to it, I think Forge is putting more into this tournament and they'll overcome Foz. Foz is returning with the same team pretty much that they had last tournament. They did make an upset over Managua, but I think Forge is better. They really should have beat Arcai. They really should have went deep in last year's, but they have another good draw. Luckily for them, this is the year to right that wrong. They have set up the team to do that over two legs. They'll win, even though both games will be played at Cuscatlan in a very short amount of time, I think seven days because of COVID restrictions and Forge not getting an NIE from the Canadian government, I have to say, I think Forge wins this tie. They show their medal. I mean, they did the intrepid thing last year too, and they did pretty damn good at that. So Forge wins their preliminary round to face Club Atletico Independiente de la Chorera in the round of 16. Foes that I know very well as well as a Toronto fan. Then, the next preliminary round tie. Santos de Guapolis of Costa Rica versus Verdez of Belize. Verdez gets their chance to show their medal in CONCACAF competition. Even though last year they pulled out due to COVID testing. And Santos de Guapolis are back. They made it deep in 2017 in the first Champions, not Champions, CONCACAF League. For me, I think Santos de Guapolis are the better team. Now, now hear me out here. Verdez has talent. Brazilian, not Brazilian, Bra Belizean football is growing. Belizean football is growing. But Santos de Guapolis has had CONCACAF League experience. Costa Rican teams are big. Some of the biggest teams in the region that aren't Mexican, American, or Canadian. So, with that said, I think Santos de Guapolis just gets over on their strength. Santos de Guapolis are a good team, but 
compared to Verdez, they are a great team. And I think they get through to the round of 16 against CD Plaza Amador in Panama, of Panama. Next up, CD Universitario of Panama versus IS Samaritane of Martinique. Martinique is growing at the national level. But I don't think a club team from there would beat a Panamanian team. Universitario easily beats them on strength, easily beats them on depth. Samaritane, they'll have fight. They won't go down easy, but it's got to be Universitario. They will go on to the round of 16 to face Motagua of Honduras. Then finally, CD Maraton of Honduras versus Diriangan FC. Maraton's been in the Champions League. They looked pretty good against Portland Timbers earlier this year. They got to the Champions League through last year's CONCACAF League. They'll build on that experience. They've got a good team. Duryongan, smaller nation, smaller team. Could they pull an upset? Maybe over two legs, though. That's the great equalizer. If this was the one-leg system they had last year, I may say Maraton could get upset. But I think Maraton, they're the third best team in Honduras. I think Maraton go through. I really do. And they go on to the round of 16 to face Real Esteli. So the ties that I have. Alianza FC versus Comunicaciones FC. Deport Deportivo Saprissa versus Santa Lucia. LD Alajolense versus CD Guastatoya. CD Olympia versus Inter Moengo Tapoe, which has already been announced. Same as LD Alajolense and Guastatoya. They have both already been announced. There was no preliminary rounds for those two ties. Club Atletico Independiente versus Forge FC. CD Plaza Amador versus Santos de Guapolis. Motagua FC versus CD Universitario. And Real Esteli FC versus CD Maraton. We'll start back at the top left. Alianza FC versus Comunicaciones. Comunicaciones FC. Alianza for me. Alianza is a stronger team. Comunicaciones has talent and has experience, but Alianza is one of the two biggest teams in El Salvador. And they had a very disappointing run last year. And I think they want to make up for that. And I think over two legs, Alianza shows their medal and shows that they're better. So I'm saying Alianza FC of Salvador, El Salvador to go through to the quarterfinals. Alianza's going to show better this year for sure, I think. They're going to show off a lot better this year. I don't think they're going to play down the competition or look bad like they did in the last tournament at times. Deportivo Saprissa versus Santa Lucia. Deportivo Saprissa. They stopped Alajolense from getting the beat by Campeonato in Costa Rica. Saprisa's looking like they're getting out of their tumultuous era. They're starting to build back to what they were. I'm not saying they're dominant and dominant, but they're building back to what they were. I think they are now, again, a force to be reckoned with. I think they are getting better. Kendall Waston short up their defense. They aren't a one-man team. They have a chance here. I really think so. And Saprisa will beat Santa Lucia in the round of 16 to get to the quarterfinals. That will be Alianza FC versus Deportivo Saprisa. Next up, LD Alajolense versus CD Guastatoya. LD Alajolense are your defending champions of the CONCACAF League. I think they're going to show why they are. They are a little bit weak right now. They're not looking great. They haven't started off their season great. But they have a couple of weeks to right that ship before their round starts which is great that they're in the round of 16 instead of the preliminary round, like they started last year, by the way. So for me, I think they'll have some time to stabilize the ship. I think they will have some time to look better than Guastatoya. And Guastatoya comes in facing the champions, and they'll be a little bit afraid. I think they'll play afraid. I think they'll play weak. I think they'll play in a way that is trying to neutralize the damage. But Alajolense gets through... And they get to the quarterfinals of the CONCACAF League. Next up, CD Olympia versus Inter Moengo Tapoe from Suriname. The runners-up of the 2021 Caribbean Club Championship. CD Olympia. I don't want to downplay Moengo Tapoe. Suriname's also growing nationally. But 
I think club-wise, they're still lagging behind, and Olympia is the biggest team of Honduras. And again, they also disappointed in this tournament last year. They got owned by Alajolense in the semifinals and lost on penalties. All because of, honestly, Troglio's mistakes, as I got into when we watched that game. CD Olympia wants to do better as well, and I think they start that campaign well against Moengo Tapoe and just dispose of them very easily. So there you go. CD Olympia will go to the quarterfinals. So on the left side of the bracket, you have Alianza FC versus Deportivo Saprissa and LD Alajolense versus CD Olympia on the left side of the bracket. Now on the right side of the bracket, you have Club Atletico Independiente de la Chorrera of Panama versus Forge FC of Canada. I got Forge. Again, I think Forge have built their depth into a way that they could win this tournament. They've got amazing players. They brought back Tristan Borges. Mo Babuli is firing on. Kyle Becker, once he comes back from that one-game suspension in the first leg of the preliminary round, because, again, he got a yellow card, second yellow. He got sent off, same as Bobby Smear and Yotis. Let's not forget that. I don't think that'll matter against Foz. But for me... Forge will show their quality over Independiente. Independiente is not as good as Tauro was when we faced Tauro last year, as in Forge. Again, I'm wearing a Forge jersey. Come on now. Independiente has sort of fallen off since that big giant killing of Toronto FC. They have. And oh, by the way, they loaned Omar Brownie to Forge. I don't think that's a good idea. You're going to pay for that one, but... Forge shows their talent, shows their quality. They get through to the quarterfinals. Next up, CD Plaza Amador versus Santos de Guapolis. I think Santos de Guapolis are the stronger team than Plaza Amador. Again, if Independiente aren't strong or aren't that strong compared to Tauroll, I don't think Plaza Amador is. I think Santos de Guapolis is sort of building back to where they were in 2017 in the first CONCACAF league, and I think that is the answer. Santos de Guapolis is starting to, they'll show their experience in this tournament anyway. So I think Santos de Guapolis will beat Plaza Amador tie, but it'll be a tie for Santos de Guapolis, or the tie will go to Santos de Guapolis. Next up, Matagua FC versus Universitario. Matagua. Again, Matagua is the second biggest team in Honduras. They have the Derby against Olympia. Motagua is a strong team. I think they want to do better after getting knocked out of the preliminary or the play-in round by Real Esteli. They were this close to the CONCACAF Champions League, and they didn't get it, and they want Champions League this time. And they are going to make the quarterfinals and be that close again. Universitario won't have that much chance of beating Motagua, I think. Motagua are the ones who will win this tie. Finally, Real Esteli FC versus CD Marathon. CD Marathon. Real Esteli were the worst team in the CONCACAF Champions League. They did not belong. They got in by upsets. Over two legs, Real Esteli has quality, and I think they'll play better against a team who's in their region. But I think CD Marathon are the better team. They actually gave the Timbers a run for their money. And they did a lot better in the Champions or CONCACAF League last year, I think, performance-wise. Even though it was one leg, I think CD Marathon shows their quality. They get through. So on the right side, it'll be Forge FC versus Santos de Guapolis in the quarterfinals. Then Motagua versus CD Marathon. We'll go back to the left side. Alianza FC versus Deportivo Saprissa. I say Deportivo Saprissa. Alianza does not have the quality Saprissa has. I don't think so. They don't have as good of a defense. They don't have as good of an offense. I think Saprissa are a better team. I think they are growing out of the dark ages that they had for about eight months. I think Saprissa want to get back to the final and try to get their trophy back after just barely missing out, even though they were defending champions going into the last final. They want to get back there, and I think their will will get them to the semifinals plus their talent. Next up, LD Alajolense versus CD Olympia. I think Olympia gets revenge for last year's semifinal in the quarterfinals. 
I think Olympia know what they need to do against Alajolense. They will have a home game. It's a two-legged tie. I think things start going better for Olympia. They know how to win this tie, and I think they win in a better situation. For them, I think Troglio knows what to do against Alajolense in this situation, and that also means the champion's curse lives on in the CONCACAF League. The only chance will be this year's champions to repeat next year, and that's it. Will the champion's curse live on for the whole time? The CONCACAF League is a thing. We will find out next year, but that would be kind of cool to see if it does. Forge FC versus Santos de Guapolis. I say Forge. I think Forge is a better team than Santos. I really do. I think Forge got an easy draw, as easy as they could get. They didn't get put on the Saprissa Alajolense Olympia side of the bracket, and I think that gives them also some more... Also have some more belief that they could go and win the thing, not just get to the final. And I think Forge will beat Santos de Guapolis. It'll be a tower they'll have to suffer at times, but I think they'll do it. I believe in Forge. I think their talent is better. I think their coaching is better than the Santos de Guapolis, and Forge gets to the semifinals. Then we have Motagua FC versus CD Maraton. I think Motagua's power overtakes CD Maraton. I really do. I think Motagua show why they're the second biggest team in Honduras. Maraton's a good team, but Maraton will not beat Motagua. Motagua will show their power, show their depth, show their tactical prowess over Maraton, and they will make the semifinals. So you have Deportivo Saprissa versus CD Olympia, Forge FC versus Motagua FC, and those four teams will make the Scotiabank CONCACAF Champions League in 2022. I will tell you what to losing quarterfinalists make it after I predict the final. But Saprissa versus Olympia, I have CD Olympia going to the final. I think Olympia finally make a run back to the final. I think they show their strength. They show their belief. They show their tactical prowess. I think their tactics are better than Saprissa's. I think Troglio is a better manager. I think it's still Roy Myers for Saprissa, right? But I think Troglio is a better manager. He's profe for a reason. Yeah, he makes mistakes. Everybody does. I think Olympia gets back to the final. And also on the other side, Forge FC versus Montagua FC. It will not be a Classico Hondureño, Super Classico Hondureño final because I got Forge FC going to the final. I think Forge FC has the quality to beat anybody in this competition this time. I think they've built to where they know they could win any tie they're put into. And I think that Mo Babuli and Omar Brownie We'll have a field day in this tie. Also, Tristan Borges, too. I think the team will be like you're two games away from a final. We want to be there. Once you get there, anything can happen. And they're going to get there. They're going to spoil the party for Olympia and Motagua Super Classico in the final. You get Forge in the final. So that is CD Olympia versus Forge FC. And my champions are Forge F. C. No, I'm not just saying that because I'm a fan of Forge FC, but they've built so well for this tournament. I am being honest. This tournament is the best roster they've walked into the CONCACAF League with. I believe so, 100%. And this time, they're built to win, and they will put all the eggs in that basket that they can. And Olympia, they will make a mistake. And by the way, this is revenge for 2019 as well. They've played Olympia before. Smyrna Otis has tape on what they could do better this time with their better roster. And I think they'll use that. I don't think this is the same team that walked into a tie against Olympia in 2019 and pretty much got, yeah, they drew at home at Tim Hortons Field, but then they got punched and beat at San Pedro Sula. This is not that same team. Olympia fans are going to disagree because that's what they're going to remember. And I remember that tie, but this team is different. And I think Forge FC will do the job. And they will become your 2021 Scotiabank CONCACAF League champions, which means the teams going to the Champions League from the CONCACAF League will be Forge FC as 
champions. Forge FC of Canada as champions. CD Olympia of Honduras as runners-up. Deportivo Saprissa of Costa Rica as the best losing semifinalist. Motagua FC of Honduras as the worst losing semifinalist. El Dialajolense of Costa Rica as the best losing quarterfinalist. And Alianza FC of El Salvador as the second best losing quarterfinalist. Those will be the six teams that go to the Champions League from the CONCACAF League this year. So those are my predictions. If you like this video, like it, share, subscribe. You know what it is. Tell all your friends. Tomorrow, I have a live stream watch-along reaction for the CONCACAF League because it's starting tomorrow. Santa Lucia versus Metropolitan. Yes, that's the first one. Santa Lucia versus Metropolitan. That is the tie. And that is the first leg of that tie. Live stream watch along reaction. And then Deerongan Marathon RSR. No. No, it is Deerongan Marathon, I think. You'll see tomorrow. But there will be a RSR and live watch along tomorrow for the CONCACAF League. And maybe, depending on what time I could do the podcast, I will be on El Parcero's Duke by the River podcast for the TFC Philly preview. If I could fit that in, I'm not completely certain. I'm about to look at that message after I record this, finish recording this, but I may be on his podcast for the union. So I'll see you later. Check out my Patreon, five, 10 or $20 a month. Anything is appreciated. Help support the channel. You'd be awesome if you do. Check it out. Thank you for watching. I'm Ron. I'm out. Peace. See you tomorrow.